a lot of this, like we talked about, comes down to dollars. So let's yep. talk about the 2022-2023 budget that, that has been passed in Wayne County. Congratulations on you guys on getting it done early. As you are probably well aware, uh, some other places don't get it done until June 30th uh, at 1159 p.m. So yeah. for you guys to be done We've in advance. We've been there some years too. <laughs> so overall costs, everything's increased. I mean, you talked about even development costs, right? When you talk about building schools, you know, when you've got, you know, houses, let's call it multifamily structures going a couple of years ago to 75,000 a unit now to over 150,000 a unit, right? That's a big disparagement. That's double the cost. So costs have increased. And I think we all accept that at this point. So how would you say uh, Wayne County has decided to handle those uh, added costs? Where, where do you think that lands in the budget? Yeah. So uh, we, of course, have to be, um, we, we have to be ready for it. Our, our finance team uh, does a really good job and, uh, you know, we, we want to have the most accurate numbers, but we typically try to be very conservative on, on our revenue figures and, you know, also on our expenditures. So we want to make sure that that we don't uh, run out of money, of course, um, and have to dip into fund balance. So, you know, we have been very fortunate. You know, we thought the COVID pandemic was going to hurt us on, you know, sales tax and stuff like that. And then we actually ended up collecting more than we thought, you know, so that's, we never really saw a drop in sales tax like we thought we were going to see. Um, you know, we credit that we don't have any data on it, but we credit that I think to the fact that Amazon's and places like that to have to collect the sales tax, uh, you know, and so that was a pretty controversial thing when it happened. Um, but you know, it, it's, it's helped us a lot, uh, because it didn't matter if you were shopping in a store or on Amazon, you're still gonna, you know, have to pay sales tax for it. Uh, so that helped out a lot. You know, like you said, we're seeing a significant increase in fuel. Uh, so we've had to put contingencies in the budget to make sure that we can pay for fuel, but then also how do we think outside the box? So, uh, we're having to pay a lot more for fuel, you know, um, last year we had a fuel shortage, right? Remember that when there was that shortage. So, that starts affecting counties um, because if we have a fuel shortage, we have to start being very careful on how we provide services, right? Like we've got ambulances and sheriff's vehicles that need fuel. So we've got to start worrying about that. Um, and our, you know, that gets into emergency management. Our EM team does great with that, but we have to start thinking outside the box. So one thing that we're looking at is right now we don't have a county fuel depot for our vehicles, right? So we just go to a regular gas station, we got purchase cars and stuff like that. So we're looking at a fuel depot so that as we have changes in the market, we can capture and buy when it's lower and, and use it. Um, and so we're trying to think outside the box as much as possible. Um, so we did have a, uh, a tax increase this year, a slight tax increase. Um, and a lot of that was for, where was for a little bit of fuel, but also taking care of our employees. Um, so we did a salary study. It seems that a lot of places have been doing salary studies this year. It's kind of the hot, hot item. It seems like, um, but you know, and it, it takes a few to start doing them and then more have to start doing them. Right. So when you get a couple surrounding counties that are doing them and, and they're giving their employees 40% raises, then you're like, well, crap, we, you know, you're kind of forced to do one. Um, and, and the board really looked at that and said, we have not, our employees are our greatest asset. We, if we don't have them, we can't do anything. Uh, and we were losing a lot of really good people. We were kind of a training ground for the Johnston counties of the world. People would come here, they could get a job, get all their training, and then go there and make more money. Um, so we had to look at that. Um, and, you know, they, we did a full salary study and found that there were a lot of departments that were, were underpaid. Um, and, and they really have not been able to, they haven't been able to fix the problem hundred percent this year, but there's at least a plan to fix it. Right. And so the employees really appreciate that, uh, because it's tough when you are an elected official to say, we got to go up on your taxes and we're giving our employees raises, right? Like you're really sticking your neck out there. Um, but I know personally, you know, talking to employees, it meant a lot, you know, um, and so the employees were really a big portion of it. And then the uh, about a, a penny of that tax increase was for debt service. So it was when we started looking at the Fremont Elementary School and the price increase. So we, we last year passed a tax increase as well. And that was really for capital projects. And so they said, okay, so we're going to raise the taxes to pay for these capital projects. And then they, they started looking at it like, 
the costs have increased so much. We've got to do something now to to make up for that. Uh, and so it's it it it's not fun, but it's something that has to be done. Um, and so that's uh, that was the other portion of the tax increase. So we've got major projects, of course. Like I talked about the school, we are building a new combined DSS and health facility. Um, because we've got to, you know, public health, of course, was hit really, really bad during the pandemic. Uh, and it, it kind of brought up a lot of issues with our current health department. It's really old and stuff. And so we've got to do something better for health and DSS. Uh, so we've got a new health and DSS facility that's coming. Uh, also, we've got a new um, jail facility that's coming. We've got right now, we, we've got two different jails. We outgrew one of them and we've got a second one. Um, what y'all and, doing outgrowing your jails out there in Wayne County? What are y'all doing with that? Don't it, be outgrowing you know, your jails now. It's, that's a problem. Now, you, you know, so I, the, one, the original jail is built onto the courthouse. It's an old facility, right? So they had to build a new one. Um, and, but I'll tell you one thing, Justin, one fun fact, it's, we actually make money on our jails. So, so we house inmates for other counties who are full. Uh, and so we actually, you know, can make a little bit of money there. It's something that a lot of people don't realize, right? Like you see that we've got, we've got people from other counties, but we're actually getting paid for that. Um, so it, that's kind of a fun little fact there about county government. But, uh, you know, what's interesting about it, Justin, is our facilities director says it best that jails age in dog years because they go through so much because you think about it, you've got people that are in jail that have one goal and their goal is to try to get out of jail and they will do whatever it takes to try to get out. And, and it's not even getting out of jail. It's just maybe getting out of their cell for a little bit. So, I mean, they really will do anything and everything to try to get out of their cell for a little bit. And so they get beat up. Uh, and so jails have to be worked on quite often. Um, and right now it's costing more money to, to work on our old jail. So we're expanding our, our newer jail. Um, so that's another big capital project for us right now. So we've got a lot of big capital projects that we're working on and tackling. Uh, but, you know, it's one of those things, like you said, that you've got to be prepared for for the next 10 years. You know, that's that's what you got to do. Well, and in, in, in anytime your your county and your, the government in general, right, and the, and the organizations and the factions of the government, you have so many tools you can use, right? You have certain things you can use. Budgeting is a major aspect of government and uh, taxing and referendums and certain things like that are the tools uh, to equate it to something else going on, right? You take, uh, everyone's talking about interest rates, right? And I don't think that conversation, the conversation is always there, but of course it's there more when you've got astronomical up and downs, right, of, of interest rates. So with the Fed raising yeah. rates, that's a tool they have of something they can use to try to control inflation. There are certain things out of control. So you mentioned, for instance, uh, other counties, right? offering their, uh, their employees more dollars. that You can't control that. You can't tell another county what they can and can't do. Just like America can't tell another country what to do in many aspects. Yeah. Now we try to negotiate, we leverage, as I'm sure happens at the local level as well. There are certain relationships and certain things, gives and takes that occur. Uh, but utilizing taxes to better the life for citizens over a longer period of time is one of the main aspects. So if I'm looking at it right, um, I'm looking at a um, three and a half cent tax increase on property taxes. Now this is the one that I found interesting, and when I and I read the budget, I told I mentioned yeah, you I read the I'm budget. I'm proud of you for that. Yeah, I appreciate that. Um, a twenty percent increase at the uh, is it Genoa? Is it Genoa? Is that how I say it? Genoa sewer system? So twenty yep. percent increase, and we talked about at the beginning here capacity and infrastructure, real infrastructure. I'm talking about dirt infrastructure, uh, treatment facilities. 20 percent that's not little yeah so the interesting thing about that is so we don't run our own uh sewer system so we are we uh, let me take that back we run our own sewer system we do not run our own facility to treat that the, our own treatment facility so we uh basically have an allotment from the city of goldsboro that we purchase and then we we run uh goldsboro went up on theirs 20 percent and so we have to pass that cost along. That's not a cost that we, we we just decided to go up on. It's our costs are going up, so your costs are going up. Uh, but yeah, it's significant, and and it's Goldsboro is getting close to capacity, uh, and so that's why this this sewer study that we're working on right now to see how we can look at more of a regional, you know, maybe a countywide sewer system is needed because Mount Olive's already full on their sewer capacity. Goldsboro is getting full on their sewer capacity. Uh, and so, yeah, their, their costs are going up because they've got to try to figure out how they're going to keep their facility going. 
I mean, more and more from a pure infrastructure perspective, the deeper our conversation goes, it, it seems like a no brainer for the state to really take a, a significant, and I know they're already looking at it, right? But I mean, the conversation's got to get serious at this point because even to increase the capacity is going to take time. And oh, yeah. you get behind the ball on that time there of just setting that up. You're talking about potential dollars that can never be recaptured. And so I, I would just encourage, again, any state legislators and those those in the mix there to really take a look. One of the other interesting aspects uh, we could talk and about. Again, building, yeah. And again, it's not just Wayne County. Yeah, it's 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 small cities. It's the state. And, and it's the state. It's the Let's state, be honest. You know, yeah. and so that's why it's tough. Yeah. Uh, building inspection fees, people get caught up in that. Um, that's going to happen naturally, I think, year over year. So I won't I won't dive into that one. 